I've had to hide the toilet paper roll from my son for a little bit, so that's my life. Oh, man. I, there's no tip for that, is there? No. Welcome back to the Power for Your Life podcast. I'm your host, Harrison Waters, and this is an awesome episode. If you're looking for saving some money, well, look no further. These are no-cost solutions to saving some uh, money on your energy bill. Take a listen. We are live with Heather Dedeker from Black River Electric Cooperative, and she's going to tell us about no-cost energy savings. Thank you yes. for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Welcome. Well, and I do not want to forget to mention I have Ashley Wood here, a co-host of the Power for Your Life podcast. That uh, you know, we really like to focus on these topics. This is a fun one. Do you like this topic? I do. I love this topic. You know, we'd really do a great job of telling our members about all these, you know, mm-hmm. you can hire someone to do this big change in your home and all that. And here's some quick tips and all that. But really, who could beat a no cost energy savings idea, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. So all of our members are looking for ways, easy ways to save a little bit on their energy bills. And, um, you know, I think it's all about thinking differently, making small changes and those small changes over time can really add up to big savings. So how do you how do you start? Like, is there the easiest, smallest one to go go ahead and do that everyone should just go run and pause the podcast right now and yeah, and go definitely. get done? What would that be? What's the easiest, <laughs> quick one? So I think uh, you know, heating and, and air conditioning are usually the largest loads in our home. They make up about forty to fifty percent of our monthly energy. Uh, bills are on that. So probably the easiest thing that we can do is to adjust our thermostats. Now, that's not easy for everyone, but it does probably make the most difference. Um, There's a most efficient temperature, depending on the season. Uh, We like to say in the summertime, if you can set it at 78 degrees, or as close to that as you can get, um, that's going to be the most efficient temperature. And in the winter, that magic temperature is 68 degrees. So that might mean that you put on an extra sweatshirt or pair of socks um, to be comfortable, but you're going to be more efficient when you're close to that temperature. I like that. Okay, for my wife, that would probably be two pairs of socks (laughs) and two, two, uh, two hoodies and Ashley mm-hmm. would be wearing her parka indoors. I would be. So yeah. Yes. But no, I like that. I think that's a that's a good one. Now we I know we put out these energy efficiency, take control and save things, and there's certainly all sorts of great tips. Mm-hmm. There's one on here that says a five to seven minute shower. That yes. That is really hard for some of us to do. <laughs> I say, if you've got longer hair, I think my wife, I think yes. that's five minutes for the hair alone. So yes. that's, maybe the guys can get away with that. We can make up for the. Yes, okay, well, you good. get a two um, minute shower to make up for it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> and I have uh, I have a husband and three little boys at home, so oh. I'm trying to train them now to take shorter showers. Okay. They don't understand why, but they will when they're older. That it's actually saving their parents money. So yes, five to seven minutes if we can do that or get close. To to that and that could be a lifetime of savings if you can get yes. convince them at that age that could be well until right. they're old enough to move out and have to pay their own bills that could certainly make a difference yeah they'll understand that more when they're paying their own bills so anything we can do to help train them a little bit on again these just small changes now what about i know when i had a home energy audit i i had a uh, had a gentleman come by that we we paid for and and he he definitely checked the temperature of my like kitchen faucet to see how warm the water was coming mm-hmm. out of there. Is there anything with a uh, water heater that we can do to be efficient? Yes, yes. So your water heater again, that's an area where your um, it's it's a chunk of your energy bill. So the magic temperature for that is 120 degrees. If okay. you can get close to that, um, then you're going to see savings. Really, it doesn't have to be scalding hot you know doesn't have to be higher than that if you can get it close to 120 and then for households with one to two members you can really get by with like 115 degrees for that setting so this is taking any of your ordinary thermometers putting it under the sink whenever you believe it's at its hottest seeing what it's reading now you see that it's maybe 130 degrees 
most people probably don't know much about their water heater. Can they go out straight outside to their wherever? I believe their water, their water heater, heater has the temperature and has a set on it. Gauge. It should it should have a temperature it should setting say it. on the there water you go. heater. See? Yeah. Yep. Harrison, you learn something today. Every yeah. day. The more you know. <laughs> I always say if you don't know, you know, maybe covered. Google it and you can you can yeah. figure out exactly where that's at. On I am yeah. speaking on behalf of the members. <laughs> I want to make sure that um, I mean, I definitely, you know, usually don't know about all this, but I'm learning along the way. That's good. So, and as great. far as uh, water goes, you know, just little things like turning the water off when you're brushing your teeth, um, you know, that can make a difference too. I'm already a stickler on my son because, yeah, mm-hmm. he'll, first thing, first step, he'll choose the hot water side and then just full blast. Wa- and he hasn't even got soap on his hands. And so, yeah, we've, yeah. we've cut down on that. But, um, yeah, those are great tips. See, this yeah. is, you know... Who knows what you could save in a year if you do right. just the simple ones we've already been talking about, and mm-hmm. yet we still haven't spent a penny. That's right. Fantastic. What else? What else? What are some other ones we're missing? Well, let's move on to the kitchen because uh, when we're talking about water, you know, we rinse our dishes. We can do that in cold water, mm-hmm. save a little bit because we're not using that hot water that we're paying to heat, right? So, and then in the kitchen, you know, you can use your microwave or a slow cooker instead of, you know, firing up the oven or using the stove burners, just little things like that, especially if you're cooking for a smaller group, um, using different appliances can really save. Now, Nick Saner tried to tell me to turn off the heating element on the drying for my <laughs> dishwasher, and I thought I was going to get in the doghouse with my wife because there's no way she's going to hand dry the the dishes. But I bet that I bet that could be a good cost saver mm-hmm. for sure. You're so. going to get in the doghouse for just saying stuff like that. Oh like, no! You better hope she's not listening to the <laughs> podcast. Sorry, Bree. <laughs> We have uh, one of those Ninja air fryer things, too. Yes. We, use those, we use that for a lot of meals instead of turning mm-hmm. on the oven, too. I, I, I use my air fryer and mm-hmm. the Instant Pots um, yeah. a lot, especially in the wintertime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, those types of meals just feel a little cozier. Um, but, yeah, our members are really saving money when they choose to use those types of smaller appliances than their larger well, and if you're not mm-hmm. cooking a meal for a lot and that you don't need the, I mean, an oven is pretty large and a lot of things you can get away with if you've got a little toaster oven or, mm-hmm. a, or a little small Instant Pot or something. So I could certainly see how heating up that section versus an entire oven right. would be beneficial for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, great, great. I'm trying to look at, oh, there it is, right? Tip number six, use the air dry cycle instead of the heat dry cycle on your dishwasher. <laughs> Ashley, what do you got? Well, I was going to ask Heather, you've got another room. Should yeah. we move on to, to the next room? Well, at my house, the laundry room is off of the kitchen. So let's move there. Um, there's a few things you can do in the laundry room, like um, only do full loads in your washer and use cold water. Now, I have boys, so <laughs> for those really dirty loads, hot water, warm water is probably best. Um, but if it's just kind of a typical load, Use cold water whenever you can. You're going to really see the savings there. And then with, when you're drier, um, you always want to empty that lint trap after every load that you do for efficiency, but also for safety. Is that something, it, do they recommend yearly disconnecting the dryer, pulling it out from the wall, and even cleaning out the, the back vent? Because I've heard that that is something. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure that that one's quickly forgotten by a lot. I know I'm due. I probably haven't done yes. that in two years. So mm-hmm. um that's that's a safety thing too. I don't know yes. about efficiency as much as that's a safety because that could probably be a fire hazard. Well, I'm sure it's end. efficiency as well. But okay. yes, that is a, a safety concern. You don't want uh, the lint built up in there, and then make sure that all those connections are tight because mm-hmm. you're gonna you're gonna lose heat that way, which makes it run harder and longer. So yeah, yeah that's so a great you, point. So if you pull that out and you're cleaning that out, make sure when you put it back, you. Put it back Seal right. that thing back on for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we've done the laundry room, the kitchen. What's the next room? What should we? Anything else we should tackle? Yeah. Um, so the living spaces. Um, you know, fans, c- ceiling fans. You always want to um, run your in the summertime. You want them blowing down, um, and then blowing up in the winter. And then if you leave the room, you know, you want to make sure that ceiling fan is off or any other fans that you have because. Fans are designed to cool people, move air around, not cool the rooms. And then uh, some of us have fireplace, um, that enjoy fireplaces. And so we always want to um, turn down your heating system when you've got your fireplace going. When it, you're not using it, make sure that flue damper is closed. Um, and it, it's basically like having a, a window open if that damper is open. 
yeah, it's always, it's nice to enjoy the fireplace, but I definitely could see, you know, that is the first place to get cold or when you, when it's windy outside, you can certainly tell when that thing mm-hmm. and that the metal on the front of there certainly gets cold pretty quickly. So mm-hmm. yeah, I like that one. Um, I'm definitely a fireplace user. So yeah. um, that's the first thing I need to check and see if there's a, mm-hmm. um, I, I saw that they sell plugs for the flu as well. So like if you don't even have anything that, or if it's just like a, metal flap that closes that off i saw Mm -hmm. that you could actually buy an insulated plug to kind of help with that so Mm -hmm. granted that's still spending money we're sticking with no cost here. yeah no cost (laughs) Yep, no cost don't even have to buy that well i've got another tip for the living room and really any room in your house your shades you know pulling the shades to um at night to keep the heat in during the winter and then um keeping your shades and blinds um open during the day to catch that solar heat in the winter time is really helpful Mm -hmm. take advantage Mm -hmm. of the windows yes awesome all right do we need to go to another another room i do have a tip that you could probably use in any room of your home is just turn it off turn it off (laughs) so i go behind my boys all the time turning lights off in the room but when you leave a room you should turn the light off Mm -hmm. and i know our lighting is so much more efficient these days but it's still a good habit to have Um, So just turn it off. And then when, um, you know, my kids leave the TVs on a lot (laughs) when they leave the room, turn those large um, electronics off. Or there's a lot of settings now for appliances that allow you to, you know, energy saving modes and and things that will turn it off partially to help you save a little bit there. What is it like, you know, being a mom to three boys, Mm -hmm. what is it like for you to try and instill the energy efficiency in them? You know, how important (laughs) is that? Is that something that you hope that they learn from you and and also um, become good stewards of that? I think it's just good, like you said, good stewards, just having good habits of of saving uh, energy, saving money. You know, our our kids are... um, hopefully learning those little things that make a big difference in the long run. So Mm -hmm. both just as good habits, but also, you know, saving a little money for mom and dad. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think there's a third aspect to it is like we, we are striving to have a cleaner planet Mm -hmm. and and go greener and all that. But if we do not have to produce as much, you know, because we're not wasting as much, Mm -hmm. if everybody took these tips and did it, that would certainly cut down on, you know, emissions and everything that we're trying to do better on. So, yeah, the the more we don't let energy just, you know, slip between the cracks or leave the TV on, that's still being produced somewhere for us. So mm-hmm. um, I like that. I'm already pretty hard on, on my kids are still very young. Mm-hmm. But if you get on them early, um, mm-hmm. you know, you'll see the benefits, I guess longer down the road mm-hmm. if you could come up with one to keep the kid you know from using so much toilet paper <laughs> i've had to hide the toilet paper roll from my son for a little bit, so that's <laughs> gonna... full roll i mean a full roll come on <laughs> oh man I, there's no tip for that is there no <laughs> you know what it is disconnect the toilet paper roll and put it on a shelf above and then he has to like request it And it's taken some time, but we're getting there. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are we missing, Ashley? I mean, you can do a walkthrough and do a no-cost energy audit kind of on your own. Mm -hmm. You ever advise your members of things that they can do in that aspect? Well, I, you know, Touchstone has a great little brochure, 101 ways, easy ways to save energy and money. We have this on our website. We have brochures in our office, and it's a great resource. So I love to give this to our members um, it helps give them some easy, no-cost ways to save energy in their home, and then that saves them money. So, yeah, it's so a win-win. Use, use your local co-op as a resource. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, one that I don't get here, we haven't touched on outside. And outside, I have several neighbors that feel like they need to light up like the entire night with security lights and everything like that. I mean, we're talking fifteen to twenty light bulbs on all through the night. I didn't know if there's any other outdoor tips that we could focus on. You know, uh, one thing outside the outdoor heat pump or air conditioning unit, Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that that's clean of debris. You know, sometimes you can get leaves in there. Keeping that cleaned out, that will make a difference. That and the lights, I tell you what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you go to touchstoneenergy.com, they have their own home efficiency uh, analysis tool to be able to break down, I believe, room by room and kind of look for these things. A lot of these things you can do today. 
Yep. You know, it's not something that you have to set up or save the money to invest in, you know, these these different changes. You can do them right away. So, and if you've got kids, this is the lesson right now. Mm-hmm. Start them young. Yes. And you could save just <laughs> tremendous amounts of money in the future by by corralling their energy efficiency and um, and making them better stewards for our not only yes. our environment, but for the energy company too, right? That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Heather, for coming in. Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking, and uh, that's a wrap. Thanks. Well, that's our show. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you have any ideas for a great topic or someone who needs to be on here, just send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Membersfirst at AECI.org. Once again, I'm your host, Harrison Waters. And until next time, thanks for listening.